After settling in California in 2010, Louise Turpin, now 47 years old, gave birth to her and husband David's 13th child. The domestic torture chamber was in full flight, and even though several of the children were adults, all 13 were rarely allowed out. They were often chained to their beds, fed once a day, bathed once a year, and had no communication with the outside world. At the same time, Teresa Robinette says her sister and David had been pulled into a vortex of new temptations, including partying, gambling, and sexual exploits. Louise had called me. She just told me that her and David had walked away from the church. They had been looking into other religions, but then eventually they did dabble into witchcraft. And I know that for a fact, she even talked to me about it because I told her that, you know, that was a scary thing. You reckon they found some cult that they decided? Something evil, it had to be. I mean, you know, because that, where else, you know, what else would make you do something like that? That's just pure evil. How do you still make the leap from maybe being completely stupid in your private life to torturing and abusing your children? See, that's what I don't get. I knew they were making some wrong choices, but I never in a million years would have thought that it had anything to do with danger to the kids. In the very early hours of January 14 this year, David and Louise Turpin's 17-year-old daughter finally made a run for it. It was an escape she'd been planning for more than two years. She called 911 from a disconnected phone. Can someone help me? With the extraordinary story that she and all her siblings had been held captive by her parents. They are abusive, and two of my sisters are chained up. She'd never seen a police officer, didn't know what a hospital or medication was, but her brave act meant finally the 13 prisoners were free. Neighbors say they are simply in shock. It seemed that the mother was perplexed as to why we were at that residence. I literally like was froze to my couch. I could not believe what I was hearing. It was crazy. It was like a whole new family. Like it wasn't even the, like it was a whole new, the, everything was a lie. Like that's the, my, was my first thought, you know? Like everything, everything was a lie. The, all the stories and the conversations and the hours of, it was all, it was all a lie. All 13 victims were severely malnourished and mentally underdeveloped. The Turpin's 29-year-old weighed just 37 kilos. The 17-year-old had the IQ of a first grader. I thought they were isolated, no friends came over, no family came over. I just can't understand that it went for so long without being recognized. It's almost hard to believe, but neighbors living just meters away denied any knowledge of the unfathomable conditions those children were living in. For Louise's brother, Billy, that's something too difficult to accept. I'm disappointed at the neighbors. One had which said that they were marching in a circle at nighttime upstairs and they saw them in the window. To me, that seems a little strange right there. I mean, I would at least go knock on the door and, you know, and be like, is everything okay? There was another neighbor that came forward um, that said two of the older boys were digging in the trash cans at night. So to me, how's that not a red flag? All your nieces and nephews appear to have been starved, yeah. psychologically abused, most certainly, held captive in a various ways. Uh, do you think your sister Louise is capable of that sort of stuff? She shocked us, that's for sure. If found guilty, Louise and David Turpin faced 94 years in prison for their sick crimes. Their 13 children, who are currently in the care of the state, have already been dealt life sentences, dealing with the psychological and emotional damage created by their wicked parents. I called the lawyer's office today. Teresa Robinette and Billy Lambert have only this voicemail from Louise, left just two days before her arrest, 
as the final memory of a sister they now say is dead to them. Why do you go through all the pain and all the rest to have 13 children and then treat them like that? I have said the same thing. And what makes me so mad is, you know, we would ask her, are you gonna have any more kids? Are you done? And she would literally tell us like, she wants 20. She don't care if she has 25. She's gonna keep having them till God won't give her anymore. And So we can only be eternally grateful that she didn't have 20. Oh yeah, or 14. <laughs> Your sister has repeated the cycle of abuse, hasn't she? Yes. All the abuse together that she went through, I think, made her mind whatever her mind was. Um, um, I think it destroyed her self-worth and made her think that that was okay, maybe. What does justice look like for your sister? In my head, there is no justice for what she's done to those babies. So I really hope they're getting what they deserve in prison and that's just the way I look at it. I have no, I have absolutely no pity. You happy to throw away the key? Yeah, absolutely. Let them deal with her in there and David. Hello, I'm Tom Steinfett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.